What's happening? I don't know. Unless, uh, tomorrow's newspaper. Do you still have it? Yeah. Local accountant beaten. Left for dead. Local accountant Arthur McFly was severely beaten and left for dead on the steps of the Hill Valley Courthouse last night. They're gonna kill my grandpa? Tannen's goons, no doubt. Probably in retaliation for Arthur answering that subpoena you delivered. What are we gonna do? I'm not sure what we can do. According to this, your grandfather was dumped on the doorsteps of the courthouse five minutes ago. My dad's picture is disappearing. That's the time stream catching up with your grandfather's fatal wounds. Which means your father will never be born, and neither will you, unless... <laughs> when did you last see your grandfather? <laughs> Four o'clock, in the town square. Let's give him enough time to make his deposition. Right. We'll have to be careful not to run into ourselves. That shouldn't be a problem in your case. I mean, you were in jail. All right, let's get moving before the police find us. Freeze! Ah. Step out of the car with your hands up. What was that? What was what? Crap! I heard something back there. I think you're mistaken, officer. Well, looks like I caught me a fugitive. Carl Sagan, the speakeasy arsonist. Alleged speakeasy arsonist, if you don't mind. What the heck kind of buggy is that? Stay back! It's a prototype, still untested, liable to blow up at any moment. Or suddenly take off without warning. Is that so? Here it is again. I think the night air is playing tricks on you, officer. What is it, some kind of foreign job? A German or something? Not at all. This is solid American workmanship. Huh. Now I'm sure something's back there. Looks like something out of Buck Rogers. A year from now, everybody will be driving these babies. Save your grandfather! I'll be fine until you get back! You got it, Doc. What was that? Four fifty-five. Artie's got to be in there somewhere, spilling his guts to the DA. There he is. All I got to do is get to him before. Mr. Crockett. I was wondering if I could do a little follow-up interview with you about the plight of poor Mr. Sagan. My sources indicate that Judge Brown will be setting him free tomorrow. I wouldn't bet on that. What's that? Nothing. Listen, can we talk later? I've really got to get to the courthouse right now. Really. Why? My grandpa he needs me as a character witness to get a fishing license. Oh, well then, carry on. And do put that vicious dog of yours on a leash, will you? We have laws about that sort of thing, you know. Sure, no problem. Ah! ah! Oh, come on, yesterday, Marty. Stop talking and get moving. Einstein? Einstein, what is it, boy? 
Go away, boy. Crap. Einstein. Is it a squirrel, Liney? You want to play? Okay, let's play. What are you up to, Liney? Tiny. You! Oh, get this mangy animal away from me! Oh, come on, Einstein. Get away from the nice lady. My shoe! Einstein, no! Way to go, Einy. Now, to get into that courthouse and grab Artie before Tana's guys. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Hey! Oh, God. Um, hey! According to my calculations, the rotary engine for a full-scale rocket drill requires 1.21 kilowatts of power. Can you check over my work to make sure? Are you alright? Yeah. Yeah. But I need to get to Arthur. Why? I have to brief him on what to say to the DEA. Oh, are you the legal expert now? Come on. Shouldn't we be getting on with our work? We're on a strict deadline, right? Sure. You start without me. Turn around and start walking and I'll... I'll catch up to you in just a few minutes. Huh? Oh, hell. Oh, my God! What the hell is that? What's what? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. No, I, I mean before, while I was walking towards you. I wasn't talking to anyone. I was working on equations for my rocket drill. No, I mean after. Uh, never mind. Let's get going. Follow me. I thought I'd never leave. At least now I have a clear shot to the courthouse. You gotta come with me. Look, you're in a lot of danger. What do you mean I'm in danger? No time to explain, Gran. No, Artie. Just promise me you'll stay at the police station until- Artie McFly. Just the guy we're looking for. Hey, fellas. Run! Get him! Artie? Uh -huh. I better pick up their trail before I start fading out again. Clear. All right, McFly. Let's go see the boss. Buddy, how's my favorite accountant doing? Oh, I've been better. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, McFly. Trixie, take a powder, doll. We got business to discuss. Keo, you boys play nice now. Mwah. Nice to see you again, Audie. You too, Miss Trotter. Yeah, yeah, we're all happy as clams. Now scram. <sighs> Are you guys stupid? What are you thinking? Bringing this fish food to my doorstep. We just thought that was your first mistake. Thinking. Look at me. Do you ever catch me thinking? Huh? 
Uh... Don't answer that. Look, just drag him inside, find out what he told the DA, then get rid of him. I think we can handle that. Good. Now, if you don't mind, I've got an arsonist to snuff out. And will one of you slobs start hauling these crates in? We're on it, kid. So far, so good. Ha! Huh. Better get in there quick. Contents. One winged goddess. Oops. Hmm. Nice fit. Here goes nothing. Crates cue ball, stir the soup cue ball, clean out the blood stains cue ball. Shit, I'm not a gangster, I'm a freaking butler. Now, which one of you guys goes in first? Jeez, for a gal with no arms, you sure is heavy. Whoops. Ow, do you mind? I'm trying to conduct a professional interrogation over here. Where should I put this? Just shove it behind the bar. I'll just shove you behind the bar. Mm. Come on, Artie. Jeez, how much chloroform did you put on that rag anyway? What? Because I'm having a hard time bringing Sleeping Beauty here around. Uh, uh, Let me see. Uh... Artie, we got a few questions about you and the DA. DA, DA, D, E, D. You see what I'm working with here? Seems to be catching. Zane, wake up. Oh, sorry, boss. This stupid cold got me wiped out. <coughs> well, try to stay awake long enough to finish that poster, will ya? We got a club to open in a few days. And turn off that sign, would ya? Up, sleepyhead. Ah, <laughs> oh, stupid cold. Ooh, no wonder Artie's so out of it. Hey guys, I don't feel so. Say, wake up, you lazy bum! Must have been the cold. Cold my eye. He's been dipping into the inventory. The inventory. One more on down. Two to go. I hope the sisters of mercy approve of our redecorating. <laughs> hey. What was that? Must be some wiring problems with the emergency button. I hope the Sisters of Mercy approve of our redeck. Dermot's Canadian whiskey. Ow! 
Hi, hi. What the? I think we blew a fuse. Well, go up to the soup kitchen and get a new one. Why me? You'd rather hang around and talk to this guy, huh? Three days are here again. Yeah, I'll just get that fuse. Wake up, sleepyhead. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, you. Wait, do I know you? Not for about 40 years. Is anyone Whoa. down there? Everything's spinning. Come on, Artie. Let's get out of here before these jerks get a chance to kill you. Wait a minute. They were gonna kill me? <gasps> Great. This isn't funny, guys. Perfect timing. Hang on, Grandpa. We've got a pickup to make. I thought you'd never ask. Ah, what's he doing here? It's a long story. Oh, son of a... And then I carried Artie to the DeLorean. He came back to get you. Fascinating. So we can go home now, right? Not yet. We still have this loose end to tie up. No, don't tie me up again. He's coming around. Please be careful. You won't be safe in Hill Valley as long as Kit Tannen remains at large. Don't worry, I'm going far away from Hill Valley, and I'm never coming back. No! no. He's got to hook up with Grandma. What's her name? Uh, it's Sylvia. Do you know a woman named Sylvia? No. Well, she knows you. We'll know you. It's vitally important that you two meet. Oh, I get it. You want me to be part of some undercover sting operation. No, possibly. Yeah. Are you G-Man? Uh -huh. Something like that. Sure, anything for Uncle Sam. I'll stay nearby and wait for this Sylvia. But in the meantime, I'll lay low. Good man. When can I expect to see you? Mm -hmm. That was a close call. You think it'll be okay? You're not fading out, are you? Besides, Arthur will be completely out of danger come August 25th. August 25th? That's the date Kid Tannen is finally put behind bars. How's that picture of your dad? Still there. Good. Let's get out of here before we accidentally elect Hoover to a second term. Looks okay. Are you sure? See, McFly residence. So, want to come in? Maybe hang out a while? I want my dad to see for himself that you're still around. I'd love to, Marty, but you've got to go. I understand, Doc. You've got a life to lead, kids to raise, and all that. No, I've got to go to the bank and stop that estate sale you told me about. Oh, oh. You go find your pop. I'll be back within the hour. See you soon, Doc. All right. Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please. 
Not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. Another day? Dad, what are you talking about? Marty? No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. I've got a bad feeling about this. Run out of town? What are you talking about, Dad? Let me in! This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone? Haven't we suffered enough? Mom! Mom! It's Marty, Mom! Open up! It sounds like Marty, but it must be a trick. Mom! Go away! Shame on you! How can I convince you? Tell me something only Marty would know. Ah! When I was eight, when I was eight years old, I set fire to the living room rug. That's right. Oh my lord, what are you waiting for, George? Let him in! Stupid locks. Marty! Oh my god, Dad. What, what happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? Biff. I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp. Biff, whatever's going on, I'm sure we can handle it. Uh, reasonably. Who are they? Eh, like you don't know Cliff and Riff. What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. I'm gonna enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm trying to process here. Where do these other tannins come from? From a mommy tannin and a daddy tannin. It's called the birds and the bugs, butthead. Ooh. Tell me. <laughs> How long have you been coming down on my dad like this? Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. <laughs> Shut up, it's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family, the Tannen family never lets him forget about it. I got a question. <laughs> Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? You've really lost it, McFly. Think back. The thing with the manure truck. Which one? Oof. And another thing. When did I get run out of town? Two years ago. Don't you remember? We made a deal that we'd go easier on your old man if you left. But now you're back. So the kid gloves can come off. Here's what I still don't understand. What about my mom? I mean, how did she end up with my dad? Beats us. Guess she has a thing for losers. She could have had any one of us, but she went for old Gimpy McFly. Ah! Oh! Here's what I still don't understand. Why can't you pick on somebody else? We do. We pick on lots of guys. It's kind of our thing. So now the Tannins are some kind of minor league mafia? Hey, watch who you're calling minor league. The Tannin gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. We got connections all over the place. No way. You don't believe me? Man, no! Bang! Ha <laughs> ha! Check it out. To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. It's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. The third most dangerous crime family in California.
Piece of cake. I never should have let that floozy talk me out of rubbing out your grandfather. Huh? Kid? No one in Hill Valley matches with the Tannen family. Marty, get in! This timeline's been compromised! No kidding! Somehow, something we did in 1931 allowed Kid Tannen to escape his date with justice. As a consequence, the Tannins have been unchecked in Hill Valley for over 50 years. Ah, jeez, they robbed the arcade? We've got to go back to the day Kid Tannen was supposed to be arrested. Figure out what went wrong and fix it. Otherwise, you could be forever stuck in a town owned by the Tannins. Not an option, Doc. Punch it. Okay, Doc. Let's run through this again. Some time tonight, Kid Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, the singer named Pixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of the Tannen crime family. We need to go back into Tannen speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. You can't let Kid know that you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been blasted over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. Huh, looks like Emmett's been busy. Pop, you're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down! Straight down! The last stop before the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Sonny. Sonny? Mr. Crockett, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. Then you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Annie and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Now where's that speakeasy? Sonny, you're just in time. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? 
Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you! Really? Yes! That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science! Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you! Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! No! Get him out of there! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. Go see if I can find something to help, or someone. Hey, Doc, how's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter. Those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the Expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. It doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einie's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. Hey, Edna. Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know safety. what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? 
Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars, of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. <gasps> Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Edna! What? What was that song you were singing earlier? Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would you like to hear it again? Uh, maybe later. I'll be here all night. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Doris Day? What will you do tomorrow? Lego your ego? Take a hike, Squirt. Who is the King of Siam? Am I? What will you do if I break your leg? Lego your ego? Where do you want to be tomorrow? Borneo. Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Doris Day? What will you do when I send you away? Wait till Wednesday? Where do you hang your hat? Hattiesburg. Welcome to L Kids, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. 
You. you talking to me? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my unit. Oh, lay off, Ernie. He's kind of cute. You think you can just waltz in here and make a play for another fella's girl? Maybe. What are you gonna do about it, chicken? That's it. You're toast. Looks like you need to cool off for a few. Sorry, lady. I didn't mean to get your boyfriend kicked out of the club. Oh, water under the bridge. You want to keep his seat warm? Uh, thanks anyway. I don't care. It's the lyrics to her song. Excuse me, are you Trixie Trotter? That's what it says on my dressing room door. At least, it would if I had a dressing room. What's a nice guy like you doing with a guy like Tannen? Oh, kid ain't so bad. He just takes some- Hey Toots, any chance you could sing that can-can number? The guys really love the way it shows off your, uh, assets. <sighs> Whatever you say, kid. <laughs> and quit lazing around. I ain't paying you to yak with the drunks. You ain't paying me at all, you bum. What were we talking about again? You were telling me what a great guy Kid is. Yeah, I guess he is a pretty crummy boyfriend. But until my insurance policy checks out, I guess I'm stuck with him. Insurance? Yeah. Look, I may not be the brightest bulb in the marquee, but even I know, you don't break up with a creep-like Kid without something to keep him from going all crazy on you. What's this insurance policy all about? Are you kidding? There's only one person I trust with my secrets, but I ain't seen him in weeks. You don't mean... Artie McFly. Artie McFly. You know him? Not as well as I thought. Before he took a powder, Artie was tutoring me in all sorts of stuff. Etiquette, philosophy, accountant. He's a regular renaissance man. He even had one of those smart guy professor's pipes, see? Can I borrow this? Sure. I've been secretly working on my get-out-of-kid card for weeks now, but Artie's the only one I trust to check my work. You can't be too careful when you're dealing with a maniac like Kid, you know. Break a leg out there. Thanks. She's supposed to turn on Kid Tannen tonight? Okay, Doc, if you say so. Hey, I know you. You're... Parker. Osfer, Danny, Danny Parker, Hill Valley PD. Uh, have we met? Y you look familiar. Nah. Well, stranger, sit down and have a drink on me. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? Buddy, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this... Car. Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? Whoopee! Yeah, here. now about those we troubles. Uh, I don't want to wallow Let's in misery. I came here to get happy. Hallelujah! In the winter, in the summer, don't I'll be here. Fun. I'm supposed to get this Time's guy moment, to arrest Kid Tannen? Tonight?
Come to me, my melancholy baby. Cuddle up and don't be blue. All your fears are foolish, Betsy. Maybe you know, dear, that I'm in Danny. love with you. Danny, you. So about those troubles. It all started on uh, uh, June 14th. I was chasing down one of Tannen's boys when this uh, this car, straight out of Buck Rogers, popped up out of nowhere and ran my car off the road. No. Then later, I, I lost track of a witness. The poor schlub hasn't been heard from since. That wasn't your fault. And then, to top it off, I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist. Well, not one, but two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me. Because she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. <laughs> Betty? As in Jennifer's grandma, Betty? <laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Oh, that ship sailed. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty will ever be. You've got a secret? What is it? I don't think I should tell you. When I'm sad like this, I don't think straight. But listen. Yes? I like you. You're my new best friend. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. that secret oh yeah my secret well you're my pal so I can tell you but don't let it get out I've been working for Tannen for over a month now what it's true all I gotta do is look the other way while evidence is getting destroyed or a truck full of gin is coming across the county line and Tannen makes sure an extra bunch of bills makes their way into my pay envelope Great deal, huh? No, not a great deal. What's the problem? People need to drink, right? As long as no one's getting hurt, why shouldn't Daniel J. Parker make a few bucks on the action? But people are getting hurt. Kid's a killer. Ah, that's just rumors and circumnavigational evidence. Although... That wall of fame is pretty spooky. Oh, God. I've made a horrible mistake. I thought if I could get my hands on some money, that Betty'd take me back. But when she finds out what I've done, she'll never even talk to me again. What have I done? <laughs> Hang in there, Danny. Oh, God. Hey, bartender, what'll it be? So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? 
<clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. What are you drawing? Another celebrity caricature. You drew those? Prohibition ain't gonna last forever, bub. I gotta have a skill I can fall back on when all this goes away. Think you could do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! That really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. You think you could draw a picture of this guy? Sure. Hey, that looks like that Artie McFly think. Hmm, I never noticed that before. Hey, uh, can you give him a hat like Artie wears? Should I come back for it? Suit yourself. Hey. Nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. Uh, I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where are you from? The name's, uh, Sonny Crockett. I'm one of you guys. Don't you recognize me? No. Come on. What's the dope? Spill it, or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some boner fides. I've got a little something here that might convince you. Don't even... Blink. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Sonny Crockett here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> He's back. Edna, what? You think I could have a copy of your You Should Care lyrics? I've, uh, got a club of my own that could really use some inspiring. Sure! Let me just get a page out of the hymnal. There you are. Hey, thanks. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Hey, boy, take away for this. <laughs> Gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk at the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein, you done good.
Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she? Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talk me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary- <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Hey Trixie, look over there! Why? Didn't you see it? No. Ah, uh, never mind. Right. I can turn my life around. Sure you can. You know what? I used to be a good cop. And yeah, I've had a few bad breaks. Possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car. But I'm a good man. Yeah. And all I need to do to win Betty back is be the same good man I always was. And let the chips fall where they may. All right. So, now what? Now I wait. Wait for the moment to take down Kid Tannen, restore my good name, and win back the heart of Betty Lipinski. Hold that thought. I bet that moment is just around the corner. Hey, what? I'll have a drink. What's your poison? Pets. Uh, on second thought, forget it. Suit yourself. Talk to you later. Hey, look! A paying customer! Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Buddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Cover to- Cover for me, cue ball! I'm taking a smoke break. Atta girl. You! Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice! Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you... I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella. I think you're done for the night. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. I... Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that?
Artie? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial like with my Trixie! Oh no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to start bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on the knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Huh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. Welcome back, sir. Boss? Do you mind? I'm trying to have a good time here. I think you'll want to see this. Are you crazy? Bringing a stick of dynamite into my club? That's just it, boss. It's all over the place. I think our speakeasy arsonist is getting ready to strike again. Nice job. Now, go tell them chumps at the New Yorker. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I talked to Kid. Oh? He told me about Artie. Oh. It was awesome of you to plead for his life. And it was... The awesome of Kid to spare it. So you see why I gotta get rid of all the dirt I got on Kid. As long as he's loyal to me, I gotta stay loyal to him. Thanks. Sorry about this, Dad. Trixie? Yeah? I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you should check out the Wall of Fame. Why? What is it? Artie! I don't believe it! We had a deal! Artie was supposed to be... safe! I don't know what to say. Well, I do. Felony tax evasion. What? Before he died... Artie was teaching me about all sorts of stuff. Literature, history, accounting. And I made a big discovery while I was copying all of Kid's books. This establishment ain't entirely on the up and up. Really? Oh, I knew about all the gangster stuff. That kind of thing you expect from tough guys like Kid. But when I found out he ain't been paying taxes on his speakeasy profits, well, cheating Uncle Sam is one step over the line. Once I turn this over to the police, they'll throw the book at him. This book? Hey, copper! What happened to my louse of an ex-boyfriend? I don't know. Rats. I told the chief we need a team of bloodhounds like they got over in Placerville. Yeah, but in the meantime... All right, everyone. Party's over. Everyone out of the speakeasy. Speakeasy? 
You're mistaken, officer. This is an ice cream parlor. <laughs> nice try, you. Out! Would the Valenti mob be willing to help, uh, defuse this little situation? Sure, no problem. I'll bring it up in the next, uh, company meeting. Hey, we ain't begging here. Kid just thought JJ might like a piece of the action. Especially now that he's just caught the speakeasy arsonist. Wait, you mean... Doc? Doc? You ain't with the Valenti gang at all, are you? What do you know about the arsonist? Come on, you. Off to the station house. Kid's gonna get you, rat. He's gonna get all of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. Thanks to Miss Trotter's evidence, the entire Hill Valley police force is out looking for Kid and his goons. You don't understand. We've got to find him now. He's captured a friend of mine. Who? Uh, never mind. Don't worry. We've got the entire town square sealed off. If Tannen's within a mile of here, we'll find him eventually. Uh, I don't think we have time for eventually. Parker must have confiscated this hooch from the speakeasy. Irving Kid Tannen. Guess he dropped this on his way out. It's empty. Figures. Hey, Aini, get your nose over here. All right. I really don't think Tannen and Doc are with Herbert Hoover, Aini. Okay, okay, I'll check it out. A button. All right, Doc, here I come. Rocket, what are you doing here? Uh, never mind. Come here and help me get rid of this stinking arsonist. Edna? I caught her planting dynamite while he was clearing out the soup kitchen. Guess Sagan was innocent after all. I was researching a story, you ignoramus! Sell it to St. Peter, sister. Hey, what's all this? Parker? Tannen, you're under arrest. Get him, Sacramento boy. I can't do that, kid. What? Oh, I get it. Why don't you let go of Miss Strickland and call it a night? Hey, look over there! Watch out! Give it up, Tannen. The alley's blocked off and so are the roads out of town. It's over. Over? Nothing is over until Kid Tannen says it's over! Hey, kid! Let, phony! I can't reach them from over here. Make like a tree and die, rat! Whoa! No one messes with Kid Tannen! Bowling for ten. More on this! Come on, kid. You know how this'll end. Hey, kid. Eat lead, phony! Are you sure? Hey, moron! More on this!
Yo, Tannen! Make like a tree and die, rat! Hey! Had a girl. Make it easy on yourself, Tannen. Hey, kid. <laughs> that ain't a real gun. Oh, right. I forgot. I better just get rid of it then. Oh, crap. <coughs> hey, he's getting away. Oh, no. Yes. No. There. Good as new. Oh, look, Tannen. The judge's son. All right, Parker. I want a getaway car and a clear road to Nevada, or the brown kid gets it. Doc. Are you? Doc? Yes, it's me. I'm talking to you through the radio apparatus my younger self has installed in the rocket car. What's going on up there? It's not good, Doc. Trixie and Parker did their part, but now Kid's holding you hostage. Right, Scott. No kidding. Try to get Kid in the car. Once he's inside, give me a signal, and I'll do the rest. How am I... You! Emmett! You're the cause of all of this, ain't you? Should've known. I mean... Doc, hit it! Irving Tannen, I'm placing you under arrest for kidnapping, attempted murder, tax evasion, and smelling like a piece of crap. Tax evasion? Haven't you heard? The feds are practically drooling over Trixie's books. Trixie? That's what you get for killing Artie, you bastard! What? I didn't... Trixie? Artie? All right, Grandpa. My poor car. I believe I owe you an apology, Mr. Brown. Thanks to your ridiculous contraption, Hill Valley's most notorious criminal is finally headed to prison. No apologies necessary, Miss Strickland. My rocket car may have accidentally saved the day, but only because it's a completely out-of-control failure. I need a new idea. If you're willing to listen, I might have a few suggestions. But first, I think we should take in a movie. I'm all yours, Mr. Brown. I think you'll like it. It's all about a brilliant scientist with an overabundance of hubris. Whew. Come on, Einie. Let's go find Doc. <gasps> Thanks for letting me fly the DeLorean, Doc. This thing's a blast. Are you absolutely sure that everything's back to normal? Totally. Kid's going to jail, Emmett's going to see Frankenstein, and there's no such thing as a tanning crime family in 1986. <laughs> and we remembered Einstein this time, too. Hill Valley crime rate at all time low. Hmm. Well, except for Grandpa necking with Trixie, I think we're ready to go back to 1986. Do you feel yourself fading out of existence? No. Then as long as your father's still born in seven years, I say, let your grandfather sow his oats. Sowing oats? Is that what's going on with you and Edna? What are you talking about? Emmett and Edna. They're gonna go see Frankenstein together. That's... odd. Gotta get back in. Oh, this could be disastrous. Stop! Where 
Where'd you go, Doc? God. We've got everything under control. Doc? Martin McFly, age 18. Okay, Doc, let's see what kind of nightmare alternate timeline I've landed in this time. Father George, Mother Lorraine. Hill Valley under Citizen Brown is not quite the contented town you were led to believe it was. A re-education program? What the hell? Please don't swear, Martin. It makes me uncomfortable. Zero demerits until this morning. We're through, McFly. I'll never date such a square again. My own girlfriend thinks I'm a square? The obvious question, Mr. McFly, is what happened to you? Jesus Christ, Doc, what happened to you?